I learned general relativity 10 years ago in university and I passed the exams, but I don't really understand anything. And it's always really bugged me. So I gave myself 24 hours to actually understand one of the hardest theories in physics. But the usual study techniques don't work all that well for physics. So I tested a bunch of different techniques and I was really surprised at how effective some of them were. So here's day one. Wait, day one? I thought this all happened in 24 hours. Well, it did, but I split that 24 hours over five days. I'm sorry. Anyway, day one. So I didn't expect to be writing so many notes during these lectures because I'd heard that this is a very passive learning technique, but it turned out to be worth it. It was actually very useful to take notes because it let me kind of write things in my own words as I understood them. And it also let me um, sort of write down questions. So how I'm gonna answer these questions is I'm gonna look through these notes and wherever I see one of these questions, I'm gonna see if now whether I can answer it. And for example, for this one I can, but for this question I can't. And so what I'll do is I'll take a photo of that part of the notes and then I'll put that into an AI. I just wanna zoom in right here. As you can see, I was already using Claude on day one. And then that night, something crazy happened. Anthropic, the makers of Claude, emailed me. So this video is sponsored by Anthropic. Anyway, another technique that I was keen to try was free recall. This is where you try and write down as much as you can remember without looking. I just finished the free recall for the first two lectures and I can totally see why this is an effective study method now. Um, you know, it actually forced me to recall a lot of things that I thought I'd completely forgotten because I guess I had to think, okay, so first we learned this and then we learned that other thing for some reason, what was the connection and had to like kind of build back up the whole sort of course of the lecture. I can see how this actually saves you a lot of time because this seems like a really efficient way to encode what happened in the lectures into your brain. So yeah, so far, free recall seems really great. My plan for this challenge was to watch the first 12 lectures of this excellent MIT course on general relativity up until the point where they get to Einstein's field equations. Each lecture took me about an hour to watch and so that only left two hours every day for everything else. Good morning. Yesterday did not go so well. I actually ended up cheating and doing more like six hours of work yesterday and even so I was nowhere near done with all of the stuff that I had planned to do for the day. I mean just watching three lectures and then answering my questions about them and then doing free recall took so much time. But the thing I really wanted to do was to do this problem set because you know doing problems is really how you learn physics but I just there was no way. The students actually have more like three weeks to work on these problem sets. And from my experience, these problem sets tend to be very hard. Like when I was TAing a quantum computing class, my supervisor asked these undergraduate students to derive the quantum teleportation theorem for themselves as part of a problem sheet like this. And I don't think that being able to do that is at all necessary for being able to have a basic understanding of quantum computing. And so I think that these are probably gonna be similar where they're probably at much higher level than I really need. All I really need is just some basic questions to help me solidify all of this stuff. Claude here has access to all of the lecture notes for this course. So it knows the convention that the lecturer is using and it also has access to all the problem sheets. I'm gonna ask it for first like some very basic questions for every lecture and then ask it to, pro to like progressively go a little bit harder and uh, you know, tell me which problems it thinks will help me understand the material best. Let's see if that works. An important principle in learning is that it has to be effortful to be effective. Like you can watch you know, YouTube videos or lectures and nod along pretty easily, but when you're forced to actually recall or do problems, that's when you have to confront what you didn't understand. And that is where the real learning happens. It took me an hour and a half to do all the problems, but they were so helpful. It made me realize that I had some pretty bad misconceptions and there were some conceptual points that I wasn't understanding the subtleties of. So I think out of all of the different things that I've done so far, doing these problems has been by far the best learning experience. 
So now I'm like way over budget for the first three lectures and I have to get on to the next three lectures. Um, but I'm going to try and change around the balance a little bit so that I emphasize problem solving rather than the other stuff. Not really sure what I should be giving up. Maybe the free recall? Maybe problems in a way are a form of free recall? I'm not sure. Just finished lecture four. That was super confusing because it introduced a bunch of new ideas. So I'm going to try free recall and we'll see if that helps out. <sighs> okay, um, I finished writing out a very, very quick um, free recall. It was less than like seven minutes and it was very much worth it because, um, yeah, after watching the lecture, I felt completely confused, but uh, just forcing myself to try and reconstruct the general logic of the lecture made me realize like, okay, what we were trying to do, which parts that I have some like uh, holes in and actually that they're not that bad. It's just like a few calculations that I didn't understand. But overall, now I see the gist of the story. So that was very, very helpful. So I think I'll keep doing that. Doing the problems continues to be the best way to understand the material. Um, yeah, I feel like finally that lecture makes sense now. It's day three now and I haven't yet fallen behind, but I have been skipping a lot of things. So yesterday I managed to watch all three lectures and do free recall for the first two and do problems just for the first one. Ideally, I would be doing it for all of them. But what I've been finding is that the free recall actually takes a lot longer than I expect it to because I end up, um, you know, only doing sort of five minutes to actually do the recall. But afterwards, as I go through the lecture and realize how much I didn't understand, it takes me a long time to then, then go and process it all. So given that, it seems like the biggest bottleneck for me is like understanding things during the lecture itself. So I had this idea. I'm going to ask Claude to summarize the lecture before I actually watch it and tell me which things to look out for and what the aim of the lecture is. Because I think I spend so much time in these lectures just wondering what the point is, like what we're getting towards. So just knowing that is probably gonna be helpful. Okay, I think that's actually gonna be very useful because in the previous lecture, a lot of the lecture time was devoted to deriving certain results, certain equations. And you know, the proofs were very interesting and tricky, but ultimately the proofs don't matter. It's really just the equation that you get out at the end that matters. And so I spent a lot of time during that lecture just trying to like follow the derivation and getting lost and like, you know, going back and everything. But in the end I realized, oh, well, there's just like a few equations that we, that we derived in this lecture. I think the same thing is gonna happen here. This is mostly, it seems, a mathematical lecture about how to take derivatives in curved space time. And so we're just trying to answer that simple question. And so I shouldn't worry too much about the derivations. I just need to try and focus on what the upshot is. So let's see if that makes this lecture a little easier. Getting a summary before the lecture was actually pretty helpful there. In fact, I skipped over most of the lecture because it was going through derivations that I knew I wasn't gonna remember anyway and really weren't that important. So yeah, I think that was a good one. I've just spent an absolutely unreasonable amount of time trying to figure out one example, um, about an hour and a half, but it's a nice example that pulls together a lot of concepts. Um, and I was just feeling like there were a few things that I wasn't really grasping. So it was nice to make it concrete. What I mean by an illustrative example in physics is choosing the simplest possible example that's still interesting. In this case, I used a sphere because it's curved and I wanted to understand maths on a curved surface. But this is such a simple curve that I could do all the maths by hand. Illustrative examples make the whole thing much more concrete. I've set Claude off to the task of making that example into like a little artifact that you can actually play with. So let's see if it gets it right. As I mentioned earlier, this video is sponsored by Anthropic, the makers of Claude. So this is a good time to show you what Claude can actually do. So I asked Claude to make this simulation for me with a simple prompt 
and it made it without any further clarifications. This is called an artifact, and you can interact with it. This artifact is illustrating the idea that when you transport a vector on a curved surface, it comes back pointing in a different direction. I was having trouble really visually understanding why this is, and so I kept coming back to this artifact again and again to help build my intuition. Interactive simulations are so helpful in physics, but if I had to code this from scratch, it would have taken me ages. Here's another artifact that Claude made for me that I really loved. This one is one of the most crucial examples in the course, the solution to the field equation for a single mass like our sun. Playing with this really helped me understand why orbits around the sun are geodesic, something I was struggling to visualize without this. What I love about Anthropic's approach is that they're not aiming to replace human thinking. Instead, Claude supports you to do hard things for yourself, like learning general relativity. So if you're interested in trying Claude out, the link is in the description. I ended up watching lecture 11 in about 30 minutes instead of the usual one hour. And that was mostly because after having looked at the summary, I realized that most of this lecture was just going to be complicated derivations of a few equations. So I think I'm gonna use that 30 minutes of extra time I have now to first do some free recall and then to ask Claude about what each of these equations means because we introduced all these new things like the Riemann uh, tensor and the Ricci uh, tensor and Ricci scalar and everything. I think it's going to help me to do an example where I calculate all of these things in a really simple setup. So I'm just going to use a sphere again. I think that'll be more useful than watching all of this. It's day five now and I've finished watching all of the lectures that I wanted to watch. So today is just for revision. I have four hours to revise the entire course that I've learned so far. And I've been thinking about what the most effective study method is for that. And I think probably what I should do is go through um, and first write down everything that I remember from the course and go back through the notes and see which things I've missed and which things I'm misunderstanding. And then from there, for the things that I'm least comfortable with, I should do some simple example problems that will just help solidify those ideas for me. That's a lot to do in four hours, so I'm gonna get going. I've only got an hour left, and I'm really sad that this is almost over. I, I feel like I wanna spend longer on this, but I, I actually can't, I have other deadlines. So yeah, what I've been doing for the last um, three hours is I've been writing down all of what I can remember from each of the main topics of the course, and then checking whether there are bits that I missed and then um, sort of working through an important example for that topic. And it's been so helpful. I feel like it's finally all coming together. Um, I'll tell you more about it in a sec, but yeah, I was just deciding whether I should keep doing that or I should move over to doing something else. Um, but no, I think that that has been really effective. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, time's up. <laughs> That was mad. That was such a crazy five days. Look at this, look at this. You see all of this? This is what I wrote over the last five days. It's, this is crazy. Looking back at the start, it's, it's nuts how far I've come. Like when, when these things were confusing me, Yeah, like I had no idea how any of this worked. I was so confused by the notation. I was confused by Einstein's summation. Um, I was like confused about the difference between the metric and the stress energy tensor and uh, the Christoffel symbols and everything. And now they actually feel really clear. I mean, I don't, I don't think I understand general relativity or anything. I think I do have the basics down though, like. I think I can mostly understand the steps that it took to get to the Einstein field equation in five days. When I started this, I had no idea how hard this was gonna be. I thought 24 hours should be more than enough to learn this theory. 
Um, but really, I didn't know just how little I knew, like how much there was to know. There's completely different types of calculations, so many definitions, so many unusual bits of mathematics. There was a lot to learn. And on day two or three, I was thinking that this video isn't going to work out and maybe I should give up on this project. But it actually came together in the end. I mean, yeah, after many, many calculations, God, that's, that's nuts. I can't believe I did that much work in five days. It makes me think though, if this is all it takes to learn a completely new field of physics, why aren't I doing this all the time? Like it was really, really hard at some points, but the, the payoff after such a small amount of time investment is pretty huge. I feel like I should be going on with this. In fact, I'm really tempted to just keep doing this course. I do have a bunch of deadlines, so I can't do it right now, but I think I want to finish the rest of this course when I do have some time off. I hope this is the start of my new learning journey and hopefully it's inspiration for yours. Good luck.